Hi everybody, this is Evan, and I'm making this short video uh, because I just got the 1900 uh, Sprague ball motor ceiling fan with the Lundell motor in uh, just a few days ago, so I've been kind of uh, looking it over. Uh, anyway, uh, I just wanted to make this video because I want to crack open the motor um, to take a look at what I'm going to be dealing with here um, uh, once I figure out what, what parts are missing. Um, I already know that there's an oiler, uh, a lower oiler missing on, on, on the fan, which I'll probably have to have someone uh, machine me one. Um, and uh, everything about the motor is a little bit different than most other ceiling fans I have, which is one of the reasons I was really thrilled to get it. Um, the, uh, the casting bosses uh, on the very top of the motor that a, down, a hanging pipe would thread into from the top, um, normally most ceiling fans have threads there for that pipe to thread into. This motor doesn't have any threads in that boss. A pipe just goes down into it and then there's uh, and then it has to have a hole through the pipe uh, because uh, a big screw goes in uh, as like acting kind of like a pin. So um, anyway, so let's go ahead and take a look at the motor as it sits right now in this kind of uh, piece of wood with a hole in it that seems to be perfect for holding um, motors and things like that with a great big point that you don't want to damage. Anyway, um, I've got three unoriginal screws uh, that I have to take off, one on the other side as well, um, uh, before the top half of the motor shell will lift off. And one of the things that I was initially kind of concerned about, and I don't know if it's true or not, um, I have to actually, I have to, I have to see uh, when I take off the top of the motor shell, but it looks like this fan doesn't have its big single motor coil inside that it should have. If that is missing, then I'm going to have to rewind a new coil, um, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that I've never actually rewound a motor coil for a fan when it is completely missing. So um, the armature of the fan was wound for 115 volts. So I'm gonna have to figure out how many turns that would be um, for the motor coil that will wrap around the pole. Um, I'm gonna open it up here in a second and we'll see, but the, but the I guess Lundell motors are, were a little different um, because they slanted their motor poles and the, the donut field coil that wrapped around the motor poles uh, was slanted on its side to the armature. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up here and we'll see what we got. Okay, so I've gone ahead and uh, removed all the screws to the motor and I'm gonna go ahead and lift the shell off now and we'll see <clears throat> what we got. with me hopefully not I can feel I am want to do that now you know what I can't be taking the armature with me because if I did no I can't there we go and there's no motor coil nope no motor coil Oh, but you can see the poles and how they go together. What a unique, interesting motor that is. Wow. All right, so I'm gonna set the camera down here for a minute. Okay. Got some. Boy, this thing really is just a, a ball. A ball motor. Well. Huh. No brakes, that's good. The whole motor shell acts as the field. And then you've got this. Which is very interesting. Well, all right. So I've got, I've got my work cut out for me here. So we will be 
figuring out what we need to do to make a motor coil for this and uh, then I'll go ahead and uh, see what needs to happen in terms of winding one and then uh, putting it together on the fan motor so that I can actually get it working because it's a beautiful motor. I went ahead and broke the motor down further because I just wanted to get more into what makes this motor tick. And I, I, I'm just kind of floored and astounded by um, the level of machining on the inside of this motor, especially for how early this ceiling fan motor is, you know, around 1900. You know, I've seen, I've seen, I guess, my fair share of ceiling fan motors um, from around this time period. Um, and there's just something a little different about this one. Um, you know, uh, I'm not very familiar with Lundell motors, um, but you know, the minute that you open this up, you can kind of see some immediate differences. You know, the, the level of smoothness and refinedness, I'm gonna try not to say that too much in this video, of this motor is really apparent and immediate compared to other American-made ceiling fan uh, motors of the period because a lot of them are just crude, you know, crude rings of iron and they're just crudely cast and machined and, you know, they're not, they're not really very elegant and this definitely is. This has got that Robert Lundell Swedish designer kind of European flair to it. I mean, look at it. You've got these integrated motor poles here that are all part of this huge thick uh, cast piece. You've got a high side here, an enormous high side of iron here, and it's all and it's low all the way down there. And then the top side over here would just come down and clamp um, so that a big gigantic uh, motor coil that's in a big donut shape surrounding the armature and the poles would get clamped down by the two halves of this shell that are that are immediately obvious right there. I mean, you know what? That's just cool. That's cool. Um, so that immediately was totally unique and different. Even you can even see some casting numbers there and the holes there for the motor coil leads to go down to the brushes. There's not much venting uh, in this case. You know, there's a slit there. There's one over there and some there up on the top. Um, the motor is a little smaller than other DC ceiling fan motors that I've seen. Um, but in its smallness, again, it, it's just kind of refined, which is kind of a, just neat. neat. It's neat to look at it and witness it. Look at this. This is the blade spider. You know, you might think, eh, okay, so a blade spider, no big deal. You know what, I've seen a lot of these. This is practically dainty in comparison to, for instance, you know, here's the RNMA that I have. You know, this thing, look how tiny it is in comparison to this massive thing here. I mean, it's just, just dainty. And it's very carefully machined. All of these bosses for all of the set screws to every peg blade iron that would go in here, these aren't threaded. These are unthreaded. So you'd have a set screw that would stick down through here and thread into the iron itself. That alone is a little bit different. Here are the two armatures side by side for comparison. So there's a Sprague Lundell armature on the right as compared to the Dayton Skidoo motor armature there on the left. Look at the size difference between the two. The Sprague Lundell armature is tall and narrow and it's just smaller in comparison to the Dayton motor armature, which is very big and very wide. Um, and that's mirrored in the field casting. You know, here's the Dayton field casting there and it's just kind of, it's just a big thick ring of iron, very kind of crude and kind of clunky uh, in comparison to the Sprague motor shell, which is, again, just very carefully machined, very polished on the inside, and very thoughtfully and artfully put together. You know, this has just got a big uh, casing that goes on the top and one that comes up from the bottom and it bolts together like a can, and this is just all integrated. So, very different. 
here you've got the Lundell motor armature. You know, I'm hoping it's in okay condition. You can see these, you can see all the wires there. You know, a lot of them are in just fine shape. Some of them are broken, and um, I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to put them back together um, so that the armature will function as it was designed to. You can definitely tell there's been a fair amount of wear here. Um, there's this nice, big, thick ridge to the commutator. But you got the thrust collar here. And um, here's something else that's just really interesting. This is the lower motor bearing cover. And it also holds the brushes. It's really a beautiful cast piece. There's the brass sleeve bearing in there and the carbon brush holder, uh, the brush holder, the brass tube pencil brush holders uh, with the, you know, the hard rubber, um, I wouldn't be rubber, um, insulators there. But here, check this out. Look, look what this does. This is just neat. You know, if the fan motor were hanging, if the fan motor were hanging, right, and you know, you had the fan all together like that, you could cut the power to the fan motor, you could remove the motor lead here and here from the motor coil, then what you would do is you would unscrew the screws from this, and then you could literally drop the entire armature out of the motor in order to service the armature and to service the brushes and re-lubricate the bearing down there. There are no other DC motor ceiling fans I've ever seen that do that. That is just neat. Uh, I mean, again, I've seen some, I've seen my fair share of ceiling fan motors. That's just different. So, anyhow, some really cool, unique differences on this Lundell motor. Here's the, uh, here is the old world tag there, nice and thick. Uh, and it just looks great, along with the oiler, which I'm probably going to have to have uh, replicated by somebody uh, because there should be another one down here and it's missing. So, uh, you know, we'll have to go ahead and have that made. But in any event, Looking forward to uh, having it uh, come back together slowly but surely. I'll post blog updates as I uh, get further into the fan, and um, uh, we'll let you guys know what's going on. Thanks.